welcome to another exciting podcast from Living Faith Church. It's our hope and prayer that today's message will bring you closer and deeper to the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now here is our lead pastor, Pastor Dean Hackett. I want to talk to you today about a merry experience. When a person takes seriously that they are a disciple of Jesus and they're going to walk with Jesus and they truly believe that they are a son and daughter of God and they, and they choose, I'm going to live like that, I'm going to live like royalty. And, and they begin living every day, just like it says right here, you know, anticipating every day a divine appointment and ready to confidently take on the impossible. Would, would, you, would you say that with me? Okay, live every day anticipating divine appointments and ready to confidently take on the impossible. Wow. Then life gets really exciting. Life gets really, really exciting. But something else also happens. You are set apart. Because truly, there will be very few people around you living like that. The only ones living like that will be those who have made that same decision. And so you immediately become set apart. See, think, think, about, think about this. So I'm going to live exclusively for God. And I'm going to live every day. Anticipating a defined appointment and confidently taking on the impossible. How many at work live like that? How many in your neighborhood? How many of your friends? How many of your family? Does your mate live like that? See, it it starts narrowing down, doesn't it? it? It starts becoming pretty exclusive. See, that's what the Apostle Paul was talking about when in Romans chapter 12, when he wrote to the believers in Rome, and he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may show forth what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, that's, Scripture calls that sanctification. Let's pray. Father, speak to us today about having a merry experience that we will understand how to live out the kind of commitment that we've been talking about making. Living your kingdom every day. They ask this in Jesus' name. I hear an amen. Amen. Now, what we're talking about, this whole concept of living sanctification, remember last week we talked about it, that, man, if, if if this is where I grew up living, and this is how I've been living every day, when I set myself apart exclusively to God, I'm separating myself from some, from some things, right? Amen? I'm giving myself totally to the living God. And, and there were many that made that commitment last week, remember? They came forward and they spent some time praying here, making that commitment. There were some who didn't come down here and do that, but you did that in your, in your seats. And there's others that weeks before, months before, you've made that kind of commitment. 
I got to tell you something that happened last week. One of those that came forward to make that level of commitment, one, one of our church family, Merlene Gallagher, she had been suffering for days with extreme pain in her knees and legs. And, and it was becoming uh, really life-limiting. But as she was sitting here making that commitment, God, I give you my whole body. Take my body and use it for yourself exclusively. A warmth began in her feet and began going up through her body. And the pain left. And it has not returned. Hallelujah. Past, Pastor Dave, step up here a minute, Pastor. Pastor Dave, last week, you know, he wasn't here last Sunday, and he wasn't in the office Monday because this ear and the whole side of his face was really swollen, really bad. It was, it was ugly. He's not ugly, but that was ugly. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it, a lot of pain, huh, brother? Living in a lot of pain. Wednesday night, the fusion students prayed for him. And I know Pastor Darcy prayed for him. And it left. It left. Amen. God healed you. Amen. Isn't that awesome, guys? Isn't that awesome? Just, this, this is the way God wants us to live. This is supposed to be normal Christian living. Okay? But living that way is, is abnormal to the world. And it kind of sets you apart. And Mary of Nazareth had kind of a similar experience. And, and there are lessons from her life that we need to learn that will help us walk in this and, and live this out. Now, God sent an angel to this little village of Nazareth. And let me kind of, Nazareth is in the northern part of Israel. If you could kind of picture a huge map up here of Israel, okay? And I'm going to draw it from your perspective. So this is east over here, right? And this is west. So you got the, the, the Mediterranean Sea over here. And, and over here, you have, up north, you have the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River and the Dead Sea down here, right? And right across from the northern end of the Dead Sea, if you come right across to the middle of the map and put a dot right there, that's Jerusalem. I tell people it's always easy to find Jerusalem on a map because it's right in front of your nose. Think about it. You guys are really slow this morning. You should have had a, a third cup of coffee, okay? <clears throat> anyway, if you... Okay, if you... Okay, are you with me? Jerusalem's right there in front of your nose. You ready? Okay. If you go north from Jerusalem... <laughs> please smile at me so I know it's safe in here, okay? All right. So if you, so if you go north from Jerusalem up to about equal with the Sea of Galilee and you put a dot right there... That's where Nazareth is at. It sits up right at your forehead. Yes. It That's the guy that had his third cup of coffee right there. Yeah. Okay. They How am I going Am I going to finish this lesson? Okay. Here we go. So I do. So Nazareth sits on the side of a hill that overlooks the, uh, uh, the valley that goes from, the, uh, um, from Mount... I, now I can't remember. <laughs> you guys have really got me... To, <laughs> this is really, from Mount Carmel over to... The, the mountains of Gilboa. And, and that valley, the Jezreel Valley that runs through there is one of the most fertile valleys in the world. And Nazareth, if you're on the hillside at Nazareth, looking over the Jezreel Valley, directly across is the village of Megiddo. Okay, you've heard of the Battle of Armageddon. Okay, that's where that's going to take place is in that Jezreel Valley. 
And so this little tiny village, the angel Gabriel is sent there. Now, it's interesting when you read this story about Mary of Nazareth, because we know the same angel was sent to her fiancé, Joseph. But the scripture says specifically that when the angel Gabriel came to Joseph, he appeared to him in a dream. But when it talks about that the angel Gabriel was sent to the town of, of Nazareth in Galilee, it says, and when he had come in. So it wasn't a dream. Mary wasn't having a dream. This angel is there, very present. And I, I'm kind of funny when, when I read the scriptures. I, I'm reading this and I'm going, so did he knock? Did, did he knock on the door and ask to come in? And if so, what was that like? Answer the door and, and here's an angel. And, and, and when the door was answered and opened and he was invited in, did they know they were inviting in an angel? Or was it after he stepped in and then suddenly his angelic appearance began to appear? You go, where are you getting that from? Do you remember in scripture it says there's times we've entertained angels and we didn't know it? And we didn't know it? Wow, what isn't this an interesting experience that Mary's having? And the angel Gabriel, when, 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 you know, and here's how I picture it. Now, this is, this is my opinion, which means you get to have your own, right? But this is how I picture it. So, so, mom or dad answered the door, or brother or sister answered the door, and, and, and Gabriel steps in, and, and they're not really getting it that there's an angel there, and they go, Mary, somebody here to see you, and Mary comes out, and as Mary comes out in the room, suddenly Gabriel begins revealing the fact, I'm an angel. And when Mary steps into the room, Gabriel goes, oh, hail Highly favored one, you have found favor with God. Well, is it surprising that that kind of startled Mary? Well, wouldn't that startle you? I mean, if, if you're, you're sitting at, at Starbucks tomorrow or you're at Java Junkies uh, and, uh, and, and suddenly somebody walks up to you and goes, you are really favored by God would you kind of go what's up (laughs) and Mary's going what is going on and and the first thing that happens with Mary (coughs) is she has to get past fear excuse me please she has to get past fear Just the same way for you and I. When we're talking about living in this kind of commitment and we're talking about living with our life totally just sold out to Jesus and we're really walking as as a son and daughter of God and we're walking kingdom authority and we're walking kingdom life. When when just talking about that, the first thing we have to get past is fear and insecurity. Right? Mary's going, what? What? I, I'm just Mary growing up here in, in Nazareth. I mean, nobody even knows I exist. What, what's going on? It, it's the same way for many of you. Just thinking about making that kind of a commitment, the first thing you have to get past is, you know, I, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. You know, I, I didn't grow up around this. You know, do, do, do you know how I've lived you know what? I I just look look. I, I, dad Dad was was a farmer, and and we just grew. Up, you know, I I grew up with that stuff all over my shoes. You know, I I I grew up living just. You know, mom was was high all the time, and I just you know I and and we have to get past our own image of ourself and understand see Gabriel didn't see Mary of Nazareth 
Gabriel saw Mary favored of God. And so are you. And so are you. When God looks at you, he doesn't see what you've grown up seeing all your life. Please go to the next slide for me. Moving past fear, we have to be willing right here. This scripture right here. Ephesians 1, 4 to 7. You might want to turn there and see that it's in your holy Bible. And I'm not kidding you when I tell you what it says. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 to 7. This scripture is critical to you being able to live kingdom of God every single day. Look at the very first words. According as he has chosen you. Is that in your Holy Bible? Who's he talking about? Change it to the M word. Who's that talking about? Yeah. He's chosen me. According as he has chosen me. Would you say that with me? According as he, capital H, he has chosen me. Me. What did he choose you for? To be holy, without blame, before him. In love having predestined you to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ. According to the good pleasure of his will. Oh, stop. Did you see that? He didn't choose you based on you. He chose you based on his own will, his own volition. God chooses to see you as a highly favored one. And he chose you to be a son and daughter of God. And when you fell on your face and you asked him to forgive you and come live in your life, he adopted you into the family and now he calls you highly favored one. Remember what we discovered two weeks ago and we talked about again last week? I no longer call you servants but friend wow friend God God chose you not only to be a born again kid that gets to go to heaven see most of us we look at that like well I got my fire insurance no He wants you to live in a relationship with him as a friend, as a son and daughter, as royalty. Because he sees you as being favored. According to the good pleasure of his will. By his grace. Having made us accepted in the beloved. In whom we have redemption through his blood. According to the riches of his grace. Good, stop a second. Turn to your neighbor and authentically say to them, Hey, favored one. Hey, favored one. Hey, favored one. Favored. Favored. You're favored. You're favored by God. By God. You're favored by God. Hey, way back there. You guys are favored by God. 
By the way, this corner too, way back there, you guys are favored by God. Come on, wave at me. You guys are favored by God. Favored. Favored by God. But you know what? You got to get past that insecurity and that fear and walk into that. Not only do we have to get past our fear, we got to conquer our fear, but look at the next one. You got to make some loving choices here. Look at this some loving choices. Loving choices. Loving choices. Now, I, w- I want you to think for a moment. The moment Mary says to the angel, let it be to me according as you've said. She's had to work past some things. Because remember, okay, you're favored. What's next? You're going to have a baby. Wait, 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 wait. I am a good girl. I am a good girl. I, I, I have never been immoral. I, I am still pure. Can't can, can you see this on her face? Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. What are you talking about? Well, Mary, you're, you're, you're going to have a baby. God wants to use you to have his son. Now, before she can say yes to that, there's some immediate things that had to come into her heart, like I'm sure there would be in your heart. First of all, how am I going to explain this to my fiancé? I, I, I remember one, one of the girls in, in one of the high schools, when, when I was in high school, tried to explain that, well, she had been swimming in a public pool, and that didn't work. How are you going to explain that? How, how is she going to explain to her dad and her mom? How's she going to explain that to her best friends? I, there was something in the water. I don't know. I, 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 how, how do you explain that? Are, are you tracking with me? She, she's got to think through some things. And, and she has to make some loving choices because immediately, immediately there's going to come a separation in the community. She is immediately going to be separated from some of her really close friends, from people in the community. They're going to push her aside. There's going to be stories all the time. So she's having to make some loving choices here if she's going to say yes to God in this. She is taking the risk that her fiancé is not going to understand and is going to publicly divorce her. Just the same way, when you make that commitment that I'm going to walk pure, young ladies, listen to me. There is no greater choice you make in your life than to present your body to God, a living sacrifice, and say, I'm going to live pure. I'm going to live holy. I'm going to save myself for the man God brings to me. And I'm going to save myself for the man God brings to me. He's going to have to make a covenant with me, publicly make a covenant with me. And he is not going to touch me until our wedding night after we have made a public covenant together. I am keeping myself till then. I'm saving myself. Now listen, that's going to immediately separate You may not get the number one athlete on the football team. You may not get the really good-looking guy at school. 
You, and, and your boyfriend may immediately say, what do you mean we're no longer going to sit in the back seat and neck? What do you mean I'm no longer going to come over to the house when mom and dad is gone? What do you mean? When you make that covenant, there can be some separation. Yeah. Guys, listen. I know there today, and I, I, I'm embarrassed to say this publicly, but it's really true. There are girls at school that make commitments together. They're going to take guys down. Because it's known that you've been keeping yourself pure. And there are going to be girls, they're gonna be, and, and some of them are going to be really top chicks. Quote, unquote. And they, they're gonna, they're, they want to have the reputation that they're the one that scored and took you down. You're going to have to make some commitments, sir. Because the commitment, when you, make this, when you present your body a living sacrifice to God, that means I'm going to live holy. I'm going to keep myself pure. Now, let, let me speak to those that way. Well, pastor, I can't do that now because I've already, how can I make that kind of commitment to God when I've already, I've already done this? I've already, how can I do it? I want to say to you right now, when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you say, Father, forgive me and, and make me pure and holy. Wash my heart, Lord. Almighty God takes your sin and iniquity and he washes them away and he remembers them no more. As far as he is concerned now, you are a holy pure pure virgin of Almighty God. And you can make that commitment. God, from this day forward, I am pure. From this day forward. Come on. Amen. You can make that commitment. And you can walk in it. But it takes that. Okay, now, for some others, it may not be that level. Of, it may be, you know what? God, I'm giving you my body, and so I'm no longer gonna I'm no longer gonna use pot. I'm no longer gonna use alcohol. I'm no longer gonna 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 have that stuff once in a while. I'm I'm giving you my body. My body is yours. I present it to you, and and I give it to you. I live holy, sir. It may mean that you're gonna put some blocks on that on that PC. On that laptop, you're going to put some blocks on there because you're not going there anymore. You're not going to those sites anymore. You're not going there. You're keeping yourself pure. See, Almighty God says, when you present yourself to me, you have to make some tough living choices and, and loving choices. And when you do that, sometimes that's going to separate some of your friends. Do you know? Some, some of your friends don't want you around anymore. You, you, don't, you, you don't do the things that they want to do. I, sometimes, I, I got to for me, when I made that commitment, my, my, I, some of my toughest things was being around some of my family because they just didn't understand. They, they, they knew the old dean and they wanted, they, they didn't understand. And I took a lot of ridicule and a lot of mockery. Now, I'm happy to tell you that I've been privileged to lead over 20 members of my family to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I got to tell you, that didn't happen overnight. I went through a, a lot of years where I was kind of ostracized, but I just kept loving them anyway. It's real quiet in here right now. You know why? Because we're talking about reality. It was not easy for Mary. I'm telling you, especially when she started showing. It's, it's, it, that's not easy. And when you really start walking this out and your tongue starts changing, you know, you're not using the words you used before. And, and, and other things start changing and it starts showing it starts to your countenance you know what your countenance changes when you make this kind of commitment to jesus but i want to share with you there, there's a whole nother part to this okay oh by the way look, look at this one go back for me would you this one and i really hadn't thought about this one uh and i had thought about it but not like i did this week So, so Joseph goes, okay, um, Mary, I'm, I'm not going to divorce you. We're, we're going to, I believe you. I believe this is from God. And, and, uh, and so I'm not going to, 
and Joseph, yeah. We're not, we're not going to get to consummate the marriage till after he's born and then after the purification and after that. Joseph has to wait over nine months to consummate the marriage with his wife. Now, I, I, don't, know, I don't know what goes through your mind when you think about that. But I think of things like this. How tough was it for him to get ready to go to bed each night and as he does, he has to think about this. I'm getting ready to lay next to God. (laughs) Think about that one. He, he bumps, ladies, ladies, you, you, you th- th- think about this, ladies. You, you know how it is when, when you get that big and you're trying to get around things and you bump yourself? Oh, sorry, God. <laughs> She's carrying God around with her. Where have you taken God and you've later had to apologize. Oh, I'm sorry, God. I, 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 I can't believe I took you to that. Where does he live? He's in you. I, I think sometimes we take God places. And he goes, really? You're going you're gonna to take me there? I got to put up with that? And then there are other times when he goes, but I... I, I, I want you to take me there because I want to shine my light there. Mm-hmm. But it's for a whole different purpose than you, you used to go there for a whole different reason. Now he wants you to go there because he wants to shine his light there. See, God, when, when we really take this seriously and we begin thinking about the choices that we make, we make a choice to lovingly limit our activity because of who we are now. Not to be that, but because that's who we are. We start recognizing, wait a minute, I'm royalty. I'm a son. I, I, I don't behave like that anymore. I'm a son and daughter of God. Come on, amen? And it, it changes. It, it, it changes. It's a loving choice, not legalism. It's a loving choice. But then it goes the other way too. We, because of who we are, we make loving choices to do the things we would not have done before. So the church calls for days of fasting and prayer. And you go, boy, I don't know about this not eating thing. But I've never done it. But okay, God, I'll I'll, I'll make that choice. I'll I'll, I'll go without breakfast and lunch. And instead of eating, I'll read your word and I'll pray. And you know what? I'll I'll go to those nights of prayer. And I've never gone to. And I I can't imagine a whole hour of praying. That's I have trouble getting through three minutes. Come on, really? But, but you, you make the choice not out of legalism, not out of have to, but because I, I know who I am now. I'm a son and daughter of God. And so I'm making these choices as a son and daughter of God. Hallelujah. Now, I'm sorry, we could, we could go back to the one you had up there before. Thank you. Nothing is impossible. Did, did you catch what he said to her? For with God, but dear ones, you can't live the kind of life I'm talking about right now out of your own strength and your and your own ability. Just as it was impossible for Mary of Nazareth to become the Virgin Mary. See, I, I, I'm wanting you. I'm wanting you to make that distinction now we, we've gone from Mary of Nazareth the highly favored just normal girl to the Virgin Mary that everyone's going to know all down through history she's the one that was carrying the holy child 
Now that doesn't put her in some level of exclusivity and sainthood that you and I don't get to. I, I want you to understand that while she is honored because she had found that favor with Almighty God, I want you to understand something. You have found favor with Almighty God. Almighty God lives in you just as Jesus was in Mary. You found that kind of favor. Think about that. And, and I hope that will, that will so crash into your brain that it will begin impacting your emotions and you will begin thinking, wait a minute, God lives in me. Everywhere I go, God lives in me. Everywhere I go, God lives in me. I'm carrying God in me. The same way Mary carried Jesus in her womb, I carry God in me every day. Man, and when that really starts riveting into your brain, it changes some things. And then you begin thinking, wait a minute, maybe the impossible can happen. It not only can, it does. Right, Merlene? It does. It, and, and that big guy sitting there beside you, it does. I mean, God gave him a miracle sight. Come on, folks. We don't have to say, oh, yeah, I heard about those miracles over there that, that somebody was blind. They got to see. We, we got one sitting right back there. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. It, 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 and the only thing special about them is they found favor with God. God chose them before the foundation of the world to be royalty. Just like he chose me. Chose me. 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 Chose me. Can you say it with me? He chose me. me. Yeah. Chose me. How is it possible? How, Mary, Mary, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. How can you live like royalty? How can you live like a son and daughter of God? How can you live every day anticipating divine appointments and confidently facing the impossible? How, how can you do that? The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Yes. Amen. By the Holy Spirit. Same way Mary did, by the Holy Spirit. Same, th- same thing, Holy Spirit. Just as it was Holy Spirit for Mary, it's Holy Spirit for you. Amen. Amen. Every single one of us. But here's the bottom line. Get ready. Here's the bottom line. Next slide for me. It's got to be a willing surrender. See, this is, this is for you. Just as Gabriel was sent to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Direct quote, Luke one twenty six. Almighty God has sent his Holy Spirit here today to you. And he's saying to you, this is what I have for you. But you have to be willing to make a willing surrender. I'll do that, Lord. Lord, I, I, I choose to believe that about me. I, I'll be honest with you, Father, I have trouble, like Mary did, I have trouble going, me? Wait, me? God, I, I, I grew up in Hermiston and me? Hey, God, you know what? I, I, come on, I've, I've got that druggy background. God, you know what? I just, I, me, me, God, me. 
God, you know what? I, 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 I really live this. Me? And God's saying to you today, close your eyes, please. Close your eyes a moment. Hear these words. Hear these words. Come on, let them go deep in your heart. Hear these words. According as I have chosen you. In love, having predestined you to the adoption of children. By Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of my will. Now look right here. See, God chose you. Dean didn't say that. God's word said that. God chose you. We are so blessed that you join us online today. For more resources on how you can grow your relationship with Jesus Christ, visit us online at www.winacity.com. If you would like to speak with someone about your relationship with Jesus Christ or would like prayer, you can contact us at 541-567-4486 or email us at info at winacity.com. 